Hello students, it's Dr. Yu. In this lecture, we're going to learn about speech memorization. In public speaking class, you'll sometimes be asked to give a completely memorized and prepared speech. That can be hard if you're not used to memorizing speeches. What I hope to do is explain a little bit of the process of understanding the difference between preparation and memorization and the different types of speeches that you can give based on the level of memorization and preparation that you want to put in and then give you some tips on specifically how to memorize speeches. Now, if we were to make a little graph, let's say, and we were to have on one end, we'll say on the left here, low memorization, and then on the other end, high memorization, and then on another axis, high preparation and low preparation, there are four different types of memorization that you can have in a speech. So when we're talking about low memorization and high memorization, we're talking about how much of the speech is going to be in your head before you actually give it. How, how, specific, how specific is it going to be? Is it going to be down to the word by word level or is it going to be more big picture or maybe you're not going to have any idea at all. And then high preparation and low preparation has to do with how much preparing are you doing for the speech? How much time in advance do you have to prepare the speech? And preparing means writing it, thinking about what you're going to say, and basically coming up with what you're generally going to deliver to people. So if we put these two axes together, memorization being how much of the speech is in your head, how, how much word for word are you going to remember, and preparation just being how much time do you have to think about it and to prepare, what you're going to say, this is what we come up with. So if you're doing something that's low memorization, but high preparation, probably the most common example of this is reading the speech. What we mean is you literally type out every word that you're going to say, like as if you're writing an essay. So that's high preparation because you're typing out every single word that you're gonna be saying in the speech. But then when you actually deliver it, you don't memorize anything. You don't internalize anything that you've written in the speech. You just go up there and you just read what you wrote. So therefore it's low memorization because you didn't mem remember anything that you wrote. You just wrote it down, but you wrote it down to the T what exactly you're going to say. So that's high preparation, but there's no memorization involved. So reading a speech. Now in public speaking, at least in my class, you're not allowed to do that. None of the speeches allow you to just read something. Because to me, that's more oral dictation than it is public speaking. So in another class, maybe like voice diction and interpretation, class like that, class I took back in my undergrad, yes, you would do reading and you'd learn how to read prose really effectively and have the vocal inflections and all that, but not in public speaking. The next type of speech is high preparation, high memorization, and that's a memorized speech. A high prep speech is a speech where you're going to write out every single word that you're going to say. And you're going to write it out just like you would if you were reading it. But now you're also going to memorize every single word that you just wrote. So in high preparation, you're thinking, I'm writing down everything to the T what I'm going to do. I'm going to plan out every little pause. I'm going to plan out every little gesture. And I'm going to plan it out to the T. And I'm going to memorize it. So a memorized speech is what you see in contests. If you watch the Toastmasters, World Championships of Public Speaking, those are all memorized speeches. So they're high preparation, they've practiced it 300 times, hundreds of times definitely, and they've memorized the whole thing. So contest speeches are generally memorized speeches. And in fact, in my class, you have to give at least two of these throughout the semester, a highly memorized speech. But then there's another type of memorization, and that is impromptu. Now impromptu is low memorization and low preparation. What makes an impromptu speech impromptu? An impromptu speech is a speech where you only have seconds to prepare. Like you literally find out the topic when it's time to deliver the topic. So in my class, you have done impromptu speeches before, where I ask you a question, the audience claps, and maybe in total you have three to five seconds and then you got to start talking. So impromptu is low preparation. You have no time to prepare. Seconds is what makes impromptu impromptu. You don't have any time. But it's low memorization because you had no time to think about the speech. You just had to speak on the cuff 
and there's nothing to memorize because you literally get handed the speech right when it's time to give it, or at least the speech topic when it's time to give it. Now, I have a whole separate lecture on impromptu. Impromptu is its own animal. When you compare impromptu to memorized speeches, it's like comparing quantum physics to Newtonian physics. It's just kind of its own little world, and that's a completely different lecture. But in between impromptu and memorized are extemporaneous speeches. Now, extemporaneous speeches are low preparation, but what we mean is this. An extemporaneous speech is a speech that you give when you maybe have perhaps minutes or hours to prepare. So an extemporaneous speech, you're given the topic and there is prep time. It's just not a lot of prep time. It's more than an impromptu where it's like not on the spot, but it might be only a couple minutes to prepare or maybe a few hours to prepare. And that's what makes an extemporaneous speech extemporaneous. So it's lower preparation but there's still going to be some memorization when you do an extemporaneous speech, but it's not going to be high memorization. It's still going to be relatively low. I tend to break it down this way. So impromptu, you have seconds to prepare at most. Extemporaneous, you have minutes, hours to prepare. Memorized, you have days, hours, weeks, months, years. But the other aspect is this. It's not just the amount of time to prepare. With an extemporaneous speech, like impromptu, you don't memorize anything. Like there's nothing to memorize, so you're just speaking on the cuff. Extemporaneous speaking, what you're probably memorizing isn't the whole speech word for word, but what you're probably memorizing is just an outline of a speech. So when you give a speech extemporaneously, you maybe have some bullet points that you have in your head. Like I'm going to talk about my dog, I'm going to talk about my cat, and I'm going to talk about why it's important but you don't know how you're gonna talk about your dog. You don't know what exactly you're going to say when you talk about your cat. And you kind of have an idea, but you don't have it down to the T, what exactly you're gonna say when you talk about why you should get one. But in a memorized speech, you will not only know that you're gonna talk about your dog and then you're gonna talk about your cat, but you're gonna know exactly word for word what you're going to say when you talk about your cat and when you talk about your dog and why you should get one. Everything's gonna be planned to the T. So there's a lot of differences then between impromptu, extemporaneous, memorized, and reading speeches. But generally, impromptu and extemporaneous are low preparation because you're not given a lot of time to prepare. And so the expectations are a little bit lower because you've only had seconds to possibly minutes to prepare a speech. But memorized and reading speeches are high preparation because everything is, you have, you're given a lot of time and you have all the opportunities to plan out every little detail of the speech. But in reading, you don't memorize anything, you just go up there and read it. And memorized, you memorize the speech and you plan out everything. Now, in this class then, and in this lecture, what we're gonna focus on are just extemporaneous and memorized speeches. Because reading is its own category, that's more oral dictation, and impromptu is its own category. But most of these tips will be useful for memorized speeches, but you can still apply them to extemporaneous as well, but you probably wouldn't need to, it'd be probably overkill. But in any case, let's learn some tips for memorization. The first tip that I would give, and I used to, com I've, I still compete in speech contests that involve memorization, is chunk it. So after I write a speech, this is an actual speech that I've written, and you can see here, this is the beginning of the speech. So I want everyone to take a moment to think of something you've always wanted to do in your life, but you haven't yet. So a little imagination exercise. Then I run a poll and then here is a kind of a thesis statement. Now, what I did was a lot of people, when they write their speeches out word for word, they write it in essay format and that's fine. But what I would do is break it into chunks and in small chunks of maybe two or three sentences at most per chunk. Now, what, you, th what this will do is this will aid in your memorization. So when I start to memorize this speech, when I memorized this speech, I started off by just memorizing the first chunk. And I even broke it down to the first sentence. So literally, this is what I did. I just started off by memorizing sentence one. I want everyone to take a moment and think of something you've always wanted to do in your life, but you haven't yet. I want everyone to take a moment and think of something that you've always wanted to do in your life, but you haven't yet. And then when I think I can say that, then I add sentence two. 
Maybe it's something on your bucket list, that exotic trip to Europe or maybe skydiving. Maybe it's something on your bucket list, that exotic trip to Europe or maybe skydiving. Okay, I got that sentence down. Now I'm gonna start over and go through sentence one and two. I want everyone to take a moment and think of something you've always wanted to do in your life, but you haven't yet. Maybe it's something on your bucket list, that exotic trip to Europe or maybe skydiving. Okay, so then I'm gonna add sentence three and I'm just gonna slowly add each chunk until I start over and I can go through each chunk without stopping. Now that takes a long time, but all the repetitions of going through the chunks is going to help you get the speech memorized. And in fact, when I used to, when I used to live in California, I had a friend who was an actor and that, he said that's usually how actors memorize their parts when they do conversations and such is they just practice one sentence at a time. They memorize every little utterance and a little chunk and until they get that one little utterance right, do they add the next chunk. So that's the first thing you're gonna wanna do. You wanna make the speech visually manageable and that's also why chunking is good because now you it's not a big thick chunk of text, it's these little chunks that you can kind of turn them into bite-sized little memory bits that you can focus on memorizing. So that's the first thing I would do. Give yourself the visual advantage by chunking it. But then the second thing you can do is learn the labels. So taking this speech, of course I want to memorize the actual text in the speech. So of course I want to, you know, memorize every sentence and all those things and I, and I want to do that. But then I want to take it to the next level. And what I want to do is come up with a system to index the speech. Why would I want to do that? Why would I want to index the speech? Because there can be times when I may forget something. And if I just memorize content, what if I forget this transition sentence? So let's say I, I get through this paragraph and I'm giving the speech or really anything that you know would make you happy. But then I have a blank here. So if I forget this transition speech, I'll probably forget this whole, this whole segment here. And I don't want to do that. So what I also do, it's memorizing your speech on two levels, is I label the chunks. So that way I can index the speech. So the first chunk, I call it the imagined goal. Basically the label is an easy way to remember what this chunk was. Like what's the theme or what was the point of this chunk? And then I label the second chunk, the poll, because I start off by saying, now by show of hands, how many of you have told yourselves some other time? Maybe you've told yourself, blah, oh, okay, cool. So you see I, I stacked two audience engagement techniques there at the beginning, cool. And then I label the third chunk. You might've heard the wise saying, patience is a virtue, good things come to those who wait. Well, I'm here to provide that side, other side of the argument. I'm here to tell you when it comes to your goals and overall happiness, the place is here and time now. The title of the speech was, the place is here and the time is now. So that's the thesis. So what I'm gonna do is after I memorize the entire speech, the content, I'm then going to memorize the labels in order. So what I'm also memorizing is this. Imagine goal, poll, thesis, transition, story want, story about discovering Toastmasters, story about quote. Okay, so I memorize the labels here and the order that they come in. So then let's say I'm giving my speech and then I forget something if I have that memory flub, all I have to do is go to this index in my head and go, imagine goal, pull. Okay, yes. And then I have a cue to remember what was the second part of this speech or what was the next chunk. This is also a, a, a memorization technique called pegging, where you come up with little pegs and then the pegs serve as little placeholders to help you remember things. So essentially, another way of thinking about this is you're creating pegs to, rem to help you remember what comes next in the speech. So label the chunks and don't, o don't only just memorize the content, but also memorize the labels and the order and practice going through the labels. What this also allows you to do is to then quiz yourself. So literally what you can do is as a way to test your memory, just pick a label and start there. So literally you could say, uh, I'll start the thesis, okay? So just start it, start the thesis. Okay, you might have heard the wise saying, okay, got it. So by quizzing yourself, you can really test your knowledge. And there literally can be times when you may need to do this. So 
let's say you're giving your speech and an interruption occurs here, okay? And just something happens. Your mic cuts, cuts out, somebody walks in and you might lose your train of thought. By training your mind to be able to, okay, start at thesis here, you can then cut into the middle of your speech and then you can see how well you know that part. So definitely quiz yourself. Quizzing is a, is a way to test your memory and to also reinforce your memory. And if you can't indexically do your speech, like find those index points, then you know you gotta keep working on it. But then the fourth thing I recommend doing, these are all things that I do myself in my own competitions and my own success in public speaking, is to do speed runs. What I do when I am memorizing is I try to get it down in content, then I index it, and of course this is after chunking it, and then I do practices where I literally just go as fast as I can through the speech. And if I have to stop to think about it, then I label that a trouble spot, and then I try, I, I re-memorize that part. So here's an example. I'll literally give the speech as fast as I can. I say, I want everyone to take a moment and think about something that you've always wanted to do in your life, but you haven't yet. Maybe it's something on your bucket list, that exotic trip to Europe, or maybe skydiving. Maybe it's a career goal, asking for that raise, starting that business, or really anything that you know you would make you happy. Now, by a show of hands, how many of you have told yourself some other time? Maybe you've told yourself, I'll do this when I'm comfortable with my work. I'll do this when I have a bit more tolerance or training, or better yet, I'll do this when I have enough time. So how many of you again? Okay, a lot of you. You might have heard the wise saying, patience is a virtue, good, or good things come to those who wait. Well, I'm here to tell you the other side of that argument. I'm here to tell you that when it comes to your goals, overall happiness, the place is here and time is now. Now, I had a trouble spot right here. You see how I had a little pause there? What I'm gonna wanna do is after I do my quick run through, my speed run, I'm gonna mark all of those trouble spots and then I'm gonna go back and then I'm gonna chunk and I'm gonna re-go through all those parts. So maybe here and then here. So literally I'll go back and I'll just do it again, what I was doing in earlier. You might have heard wise sayings like patience is a virtue, good things come to those who wait. Well, I'm here to provide the other side of that argument. Okay, well, I'm here to provide the other side of that argument. I'm here to tell you and then work on those transitions. So just reinforce those trouble spots and then do it again fast. You might have heard wise sayings like patience is a virtue, good things come to those who wait. Well, I'm here to provide the other side of that argument. I'm here to tell you that and then go continue going. So speed runs are important. Speed runs really test your memory because if you can give it really, really fast, then you know you've got it down. If you have to keep stopping or if you have to keep thinking, it's not enforced, it's not concretized in your brain, and so you gotta keep practicing. The last tip, and this is like a, like a little secret that I just, it's worked all the time for me, and it's sleep on it. Now, I'm not saying like sleep with your speech, you know, like put it under your pillow and then it's like an osmosis thing. No, no, no. What we're talking about is, is, a, is a neuroscientific principle. Have you ever gone to bed thinking about a problem and then you wake up the next morning and you have like a new insight on the problem? A lot of people can, can have, have attested to this. Like they go to bed thinking about a really complex problem and then they wake up and then just like, oh, I have this new insight on this or oh, I have the solution. Okay, so there's a, there's a phenomenon in neuroscience called percolation. When you go to sleep, your brain reorganizes its memory bank and cuts out things it doesn't need anymore and reinforces memories that have to be kept that the brain basically acknowledges are important. So here's how you use that to your advantage. And this is something that I do and it works. And I've had students tell me, oh my God, this works. Okay. Before you go to bed, this has to be the very last thing that you do. So it's not before you go to bed and before you look on your phone for 30 minutes before falling asleep, no, no, it has to be the very last thing you do before you shut your eyes and turn off the lights. Take a copy of your speech. It's probably best to print it in this case so you don't have the blue light if you're looking on a screen, so probably print it would be the best thing to do if, if possible. Take a hard copy of your speech while you're laying in bed and just read through your speech. Don't give it memorized but read through it visually because you want, to, you want two kinds of memory to be implanted into your brain. The visual memory of seeing the speech in the text, but also the auditory memory of you saying it. So you want to read off the sheet right before bed. And even if you have it completely memorized, still look at the sheet while you go through the speech. 
And then just go through it once. Go through it twice. Go through it until you start getting sleepy. When you start getting sleepy, go to sleep. And that's it. When you wake up the next morning, percolation's gonna set in. Go into the shower, first thing you do, go through your speech. Suddenly, you're gonna remember large chunks of your speech and it's gonna feel almost second nature. And some of those chunks will feel second nature. And it's like you can, and then it'll get to the point where if you keep on doing this, you can give your speech without thinking about it. Like I can think about what I'm gonna eat for dinner while I'm also giving a speech at the same time because it just becomes autopilot. So you gotta sleep on it. It has to be the last thing that you do before you go to bed. It cannot be the second to last thing, third to last thing. It has to be the last thing you do. So you do end up sort of sleeping with your speech right before you fall asleep, you know? But that's okay, it's a speech, you know? You know. So just remember that. Percolation, it's like, my, it's like my key secret. It's like the one thing I always tell people, if you want, if this is what you wanna to do to win, this is what you do. Okay, to review then. There are five little techniques that I, I'm sharing. All of these are ones that I use myself. These are not things that I'm just saying, yeah, it'd be nice if, no, no, these are things that I use and it, with a lot of success. Chunk it. So of course, after you write your speech, chunk it, label it. So label the chunks and memorize the chunks. Now, if you're giving an extemporaneous speech, that's all you're gonna be able to remember are just the labels. Then quiz yourself. Make yourself start the speech in different spots, whether it's in the middle or at the beginning or at the end. Do that. Then do speed runs. Speed running is the easy, is the one of the most ultimate ways of testing your knowledge of the speech. Because if you can give it really fast, then you can definitely give it really slow. And then lastly, sleep on it. Let your brain percolate. Let your brain form permanent memories right before it goes to bed. So that it, it's more in, 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 integrated into your memory and you just it feels more natural to you. So take advantage of experience take advantage of brain science. I also had somebody in one of my Toastmasters clubs say something really insightful. And that is, don't practice until you get it right. Practice until you can't get it wrong. Don't practice until you can get, don't practice until you get it right. Practice until you can't get it wrong. And with memorization, it's the same exact thing. Memorize until it's second nature to you and you don't feel like it's a burden to give the speech. And with that said, good luck in your memorized speeches.